What's up, everybody? This is Justin Wong, and we are back with some Street Fighter 6 content. The game is officially out. You know, this is more of an educational video. I hope you guys really appreciate it. So if you guys do want to watch this, hit the like, share, subscribe, turn on the bell notification, and let's get into the video. It's going to be five things I kind of want to use on like how to get better. The first one is going to be drive parry. Obviously, when you drive parry, it takes it automatically takes away part of your bar. You see that? If I'm in a situation like this, right? For example, like if I, if you don't have that much drive parry left, and let's say someone, if Ryu throws a fireball and I have that low health, you won't even be able to parry that fireball to regain that drive gauge. So that's a pretty much example when not to do it. Sometimes it's, it's better to just block it out instead of, and just take the drive gauge block damage. Because when you just drive parry in situations where you want to, it's, it's not going to work because then you're automatically going to lose. When should you drive parry? Anytime you have meter to do it, you always want to drive parry fireballs because if you just neutral jump like this, this 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 makes you lose ground. Like some characters can actually drive rush and then punish you for for doing for doing a jump over fireball like how you normally do in Street Fighter 5, 4, 3, 2 in general. So normally in this situation to not lose ground, right? You always drive parry. Just drive parry. Because you're going to gain your meter back, right? Like, even though it takes meter, you gain your meter back from doing drive parry. So that's what that's when you should always do it. Just don't do it when you don't have any more drive gauge left because you will force yourself to exhaust automatically. There's another thing called perfect parry, right? Perfect parry is like you time it literally at the last like second, like how, how you do in Thirst, right? It's actually a little bit harder, but you, you could tell from visually how it looks. Give it to me. There you go. See, it's like... And because of that, you can cancel, like you can cancel your your drive, your perfect drive parry into something. You see, so you can you can always like if you get a perfect drive parry, and the thing is you can e always input it, right? And it won't come out until later. So if you if you do regular just drive parry how you normally would do it, it won't come out. You see, I'm tapping forward forward, but if you get perfect drive parry and just do it, you see it, it, this will automatically come out. So think of this as like an option select. That you should just always be used to just doing forward forward because you don't know sometimes you probably miss time the, the perfect drive parry but if you but if you get it it's going to be rewarded every single time you see so you can always get kind of like a punish a combo so look see he does this block string right and you can regular parry but you're not going to get a punish so you won't get a punish from that situation but if you perfect parry see so you can always get a combo and that will pretty much start your pressure in that situation you know so stuff like that is like really freaking good and you don't you don't want to cash out like you don't want to cash out because you're not going to do that much damage so like if you did like a big combo you see the damage is like so low it's not it's not worth at that point right this doesn't mean just like start just matching on parry during strings you usually kind of want to just do the perfect parry like on strings in situations where like if somebody keeps flow charting right if somebody keeps like flow chart of like medium punch medium punch like ryu for example right go for a parry on the string because ultimately in the end the worst thing that can happen is you just use your parry on a regular string and then that's it the only time it's like you would get punished if somebody hard reads that you are going to do parry and they just stop your string and go for a grab and then the grab will consider as a punish counter when you block the super in general look at this no, you take drive gauge damage right if you parry the super in general you will gain back all the drive gauge you use and you'll still get the punish counter anyway even like you block it so the next thing is drive impact and the only way you could do it is like oh if you see the drive impact you drive impact back you could drive parry but how do i react to it right you're like how do i react to drive impact normally most of the time you're gonna be like thinking like this is where drive impacts will happen because like if i block the drive impact look at that you can't you get a crush and you can't block that right right and you know this is kind of like the easiest way to, to do it but this is also a double-edged sword because you might just be looking for color if somebody just does like drive rush like this and you might just react to drive impact prematurely that's gonna happen you're gonna just have to like just hold that until you get used to it because it's really hard to just train yourself just to look for like a red drive impact color you're just looking at some type of like any different color that just spawns you're like oh drive impact do you want to use cancelable normals and what i mean about cancelable normals is that a lot of times you can cancel drive impact with cancelable normals you see stuff like that for example so you're like what do you mean justin what do you mean using your special cancelable normals it's because 
your drive impact in general has armor you see so because it has three points of armor you it gives you a bit a little bit more of a reaction time right it gives you a little bit more of a reaction time to kind of react to it you see because it has like that slight like one frame of like armor absorbing in general see and you could just do it so late you don't have to do it as fast and everything like that and it's as long as special cancelable normals right so now that's gonna be the hard part is like if you use uh you you don't want to use abusable cancelable normals because certain abusable cancel normals are just really freaking good but no one has a really good cancelable normal that i tend to like is this one see the standing heavy kick is very very good very good poke right you see i can't block in time so you have to be careful about like what you can't drop what what normals that's non cancelable to use because the non cancelable normals are going to be your really big pokes really big pokes really good range but like i said like you don't want to abuse it too much and make it predictable because eventually they're going to make a hard read that you're going to press that button so that's when you kind of like mix it up with like cancelable normals and then when you mix it with cancelable normals and you see a drive impact you'll be able to react to it better because you're looking for it so with luke you can kind of do in the situation there we go right so this is a drive impact trap like where you're like you see somebody just doing a string and you're like oh man like i i think i can i think there's a gap how do i stop it so here like i have two points of armor but then look he just drive impacts back so i don't get the recovery right so i don't beat the recovery of the ex ex sand splash and then he gets he gets the drive impact and then he gets a full combo because it's punish counter so you want to be careful of these drive impact so the best way to stop the drive impact traps do one two three you go for the parry in general or you can just do that i don't want you to do drive reversal right away because it costs two boards i want you to do drive reversal like here when you for when you force the character to use to spend their beater so now let's talk about uh with punishing so with punishing is uh very important in this game because there's different ways to whiff punish to get the punish counter, right? So if you get from a punish counter in general, right? It's really important because punish counter will always get get you like the max damage in general. Like, especially if you if you use a drive rush, because usually like you're going to always cancel into drive rush after a whiff punish, right? Or you can go into that one. Like depending on the character, it's always different, right? You won't be able to get your cancelable normal all the time. Like in this situation, like it's very tough. Like it's very tough to get that right here like this but the but like yeah manon's pretty good with it right so in general like but obviously like you see how far i can just whiff punish from here like it's like a really big sweep is usually going to be your best friend but sweep obviously has lots of like in general uh weaknesses because if you block a sweep actually if you block a sweep the sweep will always consider as a punish counter right so that's like the, the really hard part is like you gotta be careful but sweeps are really good in this game like just throwing out sweeps is actually pretty freaking good unfortunately and it's like it's a risky play but the reward is huge because you get the knockdown but if you fail you actually get the punish counter it's a hard knockdown in general so now let's talk about drive rush drive rush i would say is definitely something that you really need to practice you need to get used to it to add to your game because it's like really really important and obviously the few ways to use drive rush is all uh, the easiest way is to buffer drive rush from a cancelable normal and what i mean about like this buffer is like literally like you just tap a cancelable normal you could just tap forward forward you can't just do it afterwards like after the button hits see like it like it's not going to come out if you do it after so you have to do it while you're you're pressing medium kick think of it as like doing a special cancelable normal into drive rush is like the same as like crouching medium kick fireball Right, you're canceling your normal into the rush. Now, this will cost three bars, uh, which is very expensive because obviously it takes up half your drive gauge. But you're going to get some of that drive rush back while you're doing the combo. The reason why you drive rush is because one, when you drive rush, you can continue your combo extension. Think of it as like this is kind of like Street Fighter, where it's like FADC type of thing. And also, when you press your drive rush cancelable normal, it actually gives you better frame data. Crouching medium punch is um, advantage six frames. But now what happens if you do drive rush, a stand medium kick into crouch medium punch? 
that is 10 frame you see that it changes your frame data so that's why you want to use more drivers because it makes your cancelable normal on hit and block just have more frame advantage in general to keep your your you know your strings tight your block strings tight or you can continue your combo so normally this does not combo crowd, uh, crowd strong back fears but using a drive rush drive rush cancel that does combo now you see so this is the overhead and normally forward medium kick this is the overhead like you wouldn't be able to cancel this like get a combo afterwards in general you know but if you did this see you can get you know you can even get crouch medium punch right so you get combos from overheads from this situation um you can also do go go from low and then get a combo from there be like that so this is kind of like your your 50 50. this is why you want to like kind of like just go for like kind of like raw drive rush because raw drive rush it really it just it's just pretty much a a get in card wow justin it's like so so broken like how do you how how can you just avoid it and stop it people can check it right people can check it so a lot of times this is like very abusable you see like that like it's really hard to kind of stop right so what you want to do is you want to use kind of like look for look for your fastest your best like fastest button right which has long range and everything see so like maybe stand medium kick might be good you see it's like settle down settle down baby settle down another thing we talked about earlier about drive impact is that this was really good to kind of bait people especially if you have somebody in the corner that's just like crouching there and they're just looking for something obviously they're going to look for drive impact to try to drive impact back um so if i do this it causes people to actually might drive impact because they just see some green sh like how maximilian says and they like react with it so you normally in this situation i would just do raw drive rush from here to just bait people to like do a drive impact obviously they could check my drive rush but i mean in this situation the reward is so huge because if you land a drive impact against their drive impact one you know they spent they, they, they spent one bar right and then two see that boom boom look at that. they lose all that bar in another situation is like when do you want to like cash out people are like oh it's cost three bars like i don't want to use drive impact so much and da, 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 da. i get it i completely get it but there's going to be times where like you're, you're going to get like a big hit let's say the drive impact right right just cash out this is when you want to cash out this is when you want to like drive rush times two and just like spend all your bar like you you want to use it when like one it's the third round or like it's going to get you to win on the second round or third round like stuff like that is like super super hugely important right you don't obviously you don't do this like round one fight right you, you don't you don't do that round one fight because then you start, you're going to play with exhaust for the rest of the round it's just, and, and the, the match still goes. There's this new tech, which is kind of like advanced, uh, but we're going to show it to you because I haven't mastered it yet. I just seen it on Twitter. I'm taking trying to take a little step because if you take a little step, you actually get a of drive gauge, like one point of drive gauge. You see? So I get three drive rushes in a combo. So that one... It's tough. That's like definitely takes practicing, but you have to do it from a jab. And the reason why you have to do it from a jab is because when you do, let's look at the frame meter. So because you're plus eight and this is six frames, you have two frames to actually take a little step, right? You have two frames to, to take a little step and try to get that combo. That's like, let's like say expert combo, let's say, Two drive rush combos is not enough, but three drive rush combos would be enough to kill somebody. This is something you would you would practice on, right? The last thing I want to talk about is um, exhaust. All right, so you can put somebody in exhaust. See, so I am look, look, you see the you see the fr advanced startup frame advantage. So stand me and punch six frame startup advantage is three frames. This is that means I'm plus three on block. So now if I wasn't in exhaust, see I'm I'm only I'm minus one. You add plus four on all your normals so because of that like the block strings that you normally can't normally you couldn't do while you know like when they have drive gauge now you can do this becomes kind of more of like how street fair five is where it's like oh you know frame traps and everything like that and then you as the exhausted opponent you would be forced to play more like street fighter 2 and another situation is that you actually take chip damage 
Chip damage is actually not part of the game when you have drive gauges up for both parties. But if, if one person exhausts, the person that is exhausted can take chip damage. And you see, like, it, you can actually take lots of chip damage in the situation um, that, you know, it's really, it's kind of really hard to just deal with, right? So you can even just do true block strings because of that and just take so much chip damage, right? And you can actually put them in, like, these true block string situations where they can't even counter. Look at that, like literally strings like that to kind of just like break your guard and everything chip kills and everything obviously when you think about if you're in exhaust mode you're like oh i need to do this right and then get the full dizzy combo so now the problem with this is that if you do this you do get a full combo but the problem is once they are finished stun right they get all their drive gauge back you kind of want to like mess with them a little bit use your frame advantage to get these positions go for like more more grabs play you know play the game first before you go for the, like the dizzy i usually only go for the dizzies like one if they don't have any super meters in general or they're about to gain back kind of like drive gauge so like i would kind of like just do st a string a tight string where like they can't really stop it and you're like man how do i get them exhausted like going for this this will exhaust them in general right by by doing block by doing like block damage block guard damage right uh, special moves will also cause that supers will also take away drive gauge as well too but the best way to to be honest to get like a good drive gauge like knock like knocking back drive gauge is that like drive impact will automatically take out one bar now let's say you are exhausted and you're like man how do i stop drive impact so one you can always grab it grab is definitely your, your better options or if you're like fast enough like you can try to like beat it with like three hits and everything like that, which is kind of hard. Uh, but the easiest option is probably super. Every super that has a hit, you know, I know Zangief has a grab and everything. Probably that wouldn't work, but every super in general can can work in that situation. So that's that that can help a lot against kind of like those drive raw drive impact spams. Now, what about situations where they're like, hmm, what if I what if they do something like this? Like you can still grab, right? You just have to be really fast. Uh, let's see if this works. Because that's going to give them more frame advantage. See, you can't grab that. Yeah, I'm locked there, right? But if I don't press a button, like, I don't have to worry about it. Because it's they're locking me in block, too much block stun. Because there's too much block stun, like, I, I could just let go of block. You see? I'm not even blocking anymore. I block, I let go. Watch, I'm gonna try to hold forward. See, like I'm holding forward there. See, it locks me. So you don't have to worry about situations like that. So like, if you can defend properly, it has to be raw drive impact, right? Another way to get back your drive impact, like let's say your drive gauge meter is stalling. You see, every time you land a hit, you can, you get drive, you get drive gauge. But if I do super, it's still going to give me that drive gauge you see like it's still moving so if you're if you have a long level three you're pretty much set like you you at least get like 30 40 percent of drive gauge back in that situation and i think that's going to do it for kind of like the street fighter 6 like educational video tutorial video of like how to get to the next level how to get better the the meta of the game the high level aspect of the game i would say this this is it this is what you really need to know in terms of knowledge if you guys did enjoy this and you want to see more of this let me know in the comments below hit the like share subscribe if we hit if we hit 10,000 likes we'll, we'll focus on another educational video on how to improve your game in street fighter 6 this is justin wong hope you guys enjoy let's play some games i'll talk to you guys later peace